Therefore, I never did anything, but if you notice here, it says NSFLTP, the Nationally Significant Federal Lands uh, Transportation <coughs> Projects Grant. That road is on there. So we're applying for a grant, and it's a $60 million grant because there's a combination of roads that we're going after to try to fix everything. So, yeah, it is there. The other thing, for years, we, that project is not completely done until we have federal highways come down. And they got it because it's their money. They have to do a program review on the project to make sure every document is done in accordance with their specifications and standards. So therefore, there is a placeholder in there until we close it out. So that money, if it's not spent, goes back to the funding agency, correct? No, 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 no. It goes right back into the program. If I have a little excess, which normally I don't, it goes right back into another program, and I might use it for uh, match money on a grant. Like Mr. Uh, Tyler there, he's asking for the Evergreen Walkway. There, There's actually tap grant money available, but it has to be a local match, 18.25%, uh, I believe it is, that has to come out. So that's might be an opportunity to use that money as leverage to go a little bit further. Well, I only bring that up because, and I don't know if you've been through Oglala at nighttime, but I we, have. we used to have a very well lit walkway. Yes. And we no longer have that because of the hailstorm that came through many yep. couple years ago, and it knocked out a lot of the uh, a lot of the circuitry that turns them on and, and keeps it lit and everything and then we end up with people walking alongside the road and not on the bike path to yep, I agree. for safety reasons so that's why I was asking if that money was uh, gonna give the, be given back or if no, 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 it's no, not no. earmarked could we because I know yeah. last administration we brought this conversation up when we got bids through property and supply and it was gonna cost like thirty six thousand dollars to repair the lighting and, and what we were going through was going to be some um, some solar lighting. Mm -hmm. That way the the electrical line doesn't have to be repaired or looked at and everything. So, I mean, just just a question, you know, if that, if that could be part of the process or how do we go about putting that bike path? And I know Pine Ridge Rich. was having that same question with their bike path at that time, but... For ours, I mean, we have like maybe nine lights total out of 36 that work. I, uh, I Actually, I really do understand what you're saying. Everybody wants a pathway, a sidewalk, something that's, that's, that's presentable to the community. And I understand that. I can look for money to try to accomplish that. We did it in Manderson. We did it in Kyle. We did it in Pine Ridge. We did it. Ogallala was done prior to me, but it's still there. The agreement with Federal Highways, and you have the agreement, they, uh, they allow me to build them, but not to maintain them. So our agreement, and, and this is an agreement that we're going to have issues with in Manderson on our pathway, is I've got money for lights for that pathway. My issue is now... Lake Creek needs an agreement, not with me, but with the tribe, to who's going to pay that bill. And years ago, we used to use the WAPA credits. Dave Austin and a few of the older ones cross probably remember them. That's how that electricity was paid using them WAPA credits. And I don't know if it's still viable right now. Uh, we don't have... Uh, a utilities office from my understanding so I don't know how they get paid so hopefully I answered your question so yeah and then when we were because the district was trying to take it up and repair them on their own and get the light bulbs changed and whatever and then we were told that it's under the tribe so we couldn't make any requests to that nature so ours are already being taken care of by the tribe yeah this would be your guys decision Cons Councilman Cross. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. A um, couple things. Um, <clears throat> I, know th I know this can be an all-day topic just on roads 
And, and, and I'm glad we're having at least getting a start on it at the council level. Um, um, what mine, mine is what one is on the Yellow Bear Road on the BIA four. Um, you know, we had a we had a hall permit, and I think we the committee made an action. Committee took action to seize all hall permits on all gravel pits on the reservation because of the um, wear and tear on our roads. And um, I think that includes American Horse Creek Road, BIA four, and other um, pits that are on the reservation. And I think the only two that are identified are the ones in the on the east side. But it, it was it was taking a toll on our roads, and we we have to make those ones that like Bennett County accountable for the repairs. And I think that's really drawing concern with our schools, um, our buses, you know, having to drive in those ruts and grooves and to, it, it, I mean, it's a challenge for them every day when they haul our children to, to these uh, back and forth from their home to school, you know, they, they, um, they do their best, you know. So I think those, that road has really took a beating and, and, and I'm sure other roads are, are taking a beating too, but, uh, you know, by the, um, not abiding by the motor carrier code. And I know that's code, that code is there is to protect our roads. And we, I think that's another topic itself to um, sit down with Highway um, Safety Department to look at enforcement of those overweight gravel trucks that are going across the reservation. Um, the other thing is, um, I know Garth brought it, brought it up with the housing. And I think that should be a motion to take some action on that with the housing because housing did contribute 300,000 to Ogala and it was it was an agreement between between them that that housing would contribute to the Ogala streets and so um I know housing kind of opted out of that for some reason but I know they're responsible for for those roads um and the other thing um council is 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 a, um, what I want to bring up is the formula. You know, the formula hasn't been addressed here, but it's on the Great Plains. The Great Plains, you know, we, the, we've been fighting this because, as you know, the Rancho Villas in California, Oklahoma tribes, uh, the whole state of Oklahoma is, is funded by federal dollars. I mean, in the Indian monies, you know, that. Yeah, and so, so. So that's what the that's what the the Great Plains tribe has been battling for years and years and years, you know. And we to, to address this formula, the, the numbers are the same for for I don't know how many years, you know. We haven't had a, a increase or nothing, and so I think that's where, as legislators, we have to go to battle for the tribe, you know, for our road systems, because if we don't do nothing, it's going to stay the same. So I think that's. Um, that has to be addressed at the, at, at, the, at the legislative level, and we have to kind of sit down with the, with the uh, transportation department and then strategize, and then because these, meet, these meetings are going to be coming up here pretty soon, where we have to go bump heads with the BIA again. So, so I think we, you know, whenever the time is, comes, I think we're going to have to be ready for that. So, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman Steele. Use your mic. The BIA used to operate our roads. Construction, management, everything. And I wanted gooseneck fixed. It was just a big ditch. Went up to Aberdeen. Remember Jerry Fall? He was in charge of Pine Ridge Roads. And he says, you don't need gooseneck, John. You need north-south roads because your people go shop in Rapid City, Kadoka, Gordon, Rushville, Chattern. You only need north-south roads. So I told Jerry Fole, you son of a gun. For the last 50 years, we've been sitting at Pine Ridge talking about economic development. That's turning that dollar over in your community before it leaves it. And... If I have a furniture store in Ogallala, car dealership in Kyle, those people, it's easier to go to Rapid City or Shadron, Rushville, the way you pattern our roads, easier for the people to go 
off reservation and spend all the money as soon as they get it. We need our own economic development strategized, and that includes roads. I'd just like you to remember that because we still need our roads patterned so that economic development, we can turn that dollar over here. On National Park Service did the scenic byways. We fought to get it to come through Wombly, Cater Creek, Kyle, Wounded Knee, Pine Ridge, then out through Ogallala Redshirt Table to the Black Hills. The National Park Service works against us. Do you know where they put the scenic byway? From interior to scenic to Rocky Ford, over the hill there. You see that road fixed there? The well, scenic byway monies did that. We didn't build that road over Cooney Table. Then on out. National Park Service spends all that money they get for the Badlands National Park keeping the tourists away from Pine Ridge. They tell that tourist it's too dangerous down there. Next, the Park Service spends all that money which we got by adding our acreage to the Badlands Historic Site, making it a Badlands National Park. Look over the years of their development plans. It's all spent on what they call the North Unit, none on the South Unit. They send that tourist around us. We can't get a couple of dollars off it. But roads is very important. Thank you. Okay, so I'll let uh, Dave respond and then Councilwoman Carlo. You know, uh, Mr. Cross, you brought up a, a good, a very, very good point because the largest point on, on my funding formula is population based. We lost identity of roads. In 2018, we, we, we were at 29,000 members. In 2019 came the American Community Survey, which dropped us from 29,000 members down to 17,000 members. We lost over half our population. I, as a transportation director, can't address that issue, and I've been to housing on a few occasions because Nahasda they deal with, and they can challenge that number. They never have. I've been to their office trying to acquire the money that set aside for infrastructure. It is there, Ted's not lying when he says it's there. It is there. All they had to do was give me a letter allowing me to go after the grant money and I couldn't get that from them. So it's not like we didn't try. So we got housing numbers before. No. So yeah, it is it is a big issue because a lot of your programs are based on population and funding formulas that they whichever way it goes for them. That is that is a big, big issue. Excuse me one second here. Um, <clears throat> Council, uh, due to time constraints here, um, can you wait your turn? Because you have people that are in line to next. So instead of speaking out, give the person that there's people already signed up. So if you want to talk, raise your hand and they'll put you on the list. Thank you. Finally, uh, if uh, that's kind of it for, for me. I uh, I don't agree with uh, the restructuring of the transportation program. I've had one meeting with uh, the chief of staff when she was first hired. Beyond that, I uh, I don't think I can fall in line with a demotion because it just doesn't look right on anybody's resume. So from here, I'll probably start burning up what leave I do have and uh, just call it.
Councilwoman Carlo. Thank you, Chairman. I guess my question is kind of really um, followed in, fell in line behind uh, one of the questions Tyler asked in regards to lighting. I don't know if who or any of you guys are responsible for the lighting in our town. I get questioned on the lights from White Clay to here, um, out north from Cornholm or from the old hospital bridge up from from Pine Ridge to the hospital turnoff. Who who is responsible for those lights? Um, <clears throat> the Pine Ridge Village is responsible for those. They're the ones that are supposed to be taking care of that. Um, for like say if you got a light in front of your house street light or something yes. and it's out you have to call that number give them the number that's on the pole and you are responsible for that pole um as far as a housing if it's if it's on your lot then you have to call for that well Not, thank I you mean, for that knows. clarification you know i i, I appreciate that <laughs> i understand the home lights or the yard yeah. lights all of that but I'm talking about the street lights. That, that, that and, is part and of I, that. And I thanks for that clarification. Okay. That, but that is part of that, the street lights that are by the houses. Um, anybody that lives there by that light could call the whoever owns it, give them the number on the side to pull in. Oh, but the ones from White Clay is, is a village. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, trans uh, transportation, and go ahead. Just sitting here wondering why people. I was not guessed at the finance committee meeting when it took place. I don't know what the purpose. Is. The chairs right there. I was on my phone. Go ahead, Councilwoman Tapio. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was at that finance meeting and I thought that this was supposed to be a meeting about fixing roads and getting um, something in order with Mr. whatever his name was, Van, whatever, and, and our people and to move forward with a plan so that they could start moving the gravel and working with the gravel and start getting these roads fixed. That was the intent, but we went off all over on different different things here. Then Mr. Gosper came in and asked questions that should have been answered this morning from Justin when Justin was here. So truthfully, I don't know where we're at either. Thank you. Use your mic, you please. The thing Thank is, you. where is our solution? You know, what is this? What are we getting from this today? You know, the, a lot of discussion could have handled it in, in committee. But, but, I mean, that's my thing is, <laughs> is you know, a working session where we can where we could handle this with our road department and Justin and. All our roads, so I mean, solution. If 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 it's just gonna keep going around in a circle, spinning the wheels, motion to adjourn. Okay, uh, you wanna answer? I'm gonna let Dave answer. Give an answer. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, council. As soon as we get released from the meeting or whatever, I'll get with Justin and we'll start the plan on moving the gravel or, or how we're going to move forward. Dave. Oh, uh huh. Go ahead. Dave, so are you capable of making this, this happen, these roads? Yes, yeah. we are. Okay. Well, that plan should have been in place from the very beginning. So here we are. Guess we'll try it again. 
Well, the plan wasn't in place. Well, maybe the plan is in place, but the engineers didn't ever give us the plans for the roads. Not yet, anyway. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Mr. Gunn. So, sorry, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. President. Um, did the council reach agenda item number six? Um, Mr. Chair, that's Mr. Chair, that's one of the two that need to be finished. Yes, that's and that's what I was. I wanted to make sure we're done here so we can move on. So, with that, um, thank you for coming, Rhodes. Wait, thing. Go ahead. Um, Dave Rabbit. You mentioned the cemetery road at um, Red Cloud. Um, last administration, there was family members that came that had concerns about the graves up on the side of that hill. I talked to Avi when Avi was the director. Um, we had a lot of moisture and they were supposed to do some type of a retaining wall. It wasn't to fix that road. I don't know where that came from, but I wanted, I wanted to clarify that with you. Um, I don't know um, really what they did other than build that road up on the side there. Um, because, you know, that, that the family, those families that have loved ones buried on the side of that hill, if we get a lot of moisture again, you may have people coming off the side of that hill. Um, we built it up quite a bit from where it was at, and we did do the sides so it wasn't falling down as much as it was. I mean, I, I still see sides of the walls coming down and, and I understand, um, but I don't know what the discussion was when um, AB was there on a retaining he wall. He talked about a retaining wall. He talked about some type of spray cement, something. I don't know what that was, but um, those are legitimate concerns for those family members that have those loved ones buried there. So I don't know what can be done, but might want to take another look at that too. Good. Councilman Dillon. Yeah, I think, Mr. Chairman, as being as everybody's here, we should set some benchmarks and timelines. So instead of waiting another year for nothing to go get done, that we can have that and come back and address what's happening. You know, if you guys are going to have a planning session, I'd like to have a, a workable plan within two weeks and bring it back to the committee and then go from there steps by steps because if we, if we don't do anything nothing's going to get done again and, and i'm kind of tired of that so my motion will be that we set up some timelines number one uh, in two weeks bring back the plan on what's going to go next what's going to happen next because if we don't do anything nothing's going to happen again so that's my motion committee, committee. Both finance and EDA, so both committees are aware of it. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilman Dillon, second by Councilman Cross. You have a question? Go ahead. So, are we going to meet somewhere, Craig? Are gonna, is Justin going to come down and all these guys? Well, Justin. Justin. Yep. Can you make it down here? The yeah, when do you, you want to do it next week? Next week, next Thursday and Friday. E you, or just, could you make it on this weekend to Rapid City? I can't make it this weekend, but I can come. I can come next week for you, for finance and for Thursday and Friday. Okay, well, be here next Thursday and Friday. That's just my that's just my comment, Chair. I just wanted everybody to be here, but that's a good motion, Craig. Councilman Dreamer, you had a question. Uh, no, I, I was just going to ask the same question. If Justin could come down when we have that working session. Of Okay, if you could include that in your motion to have the owners up there too, because he has a big part of that too, also. Yes, we, we need him there. And then I kind of missed this, and I was trying to listen on the way back. Do we have money to buy finished gravel? Is there money available for that? Uh, or is there widgeons again? Are we just dreaming? 
You know, that, that's the question. And if we do have money, I want to know how much, how much we can get done. I'll have to get with the treasurer. I can, sorry to jump in, this is Justin, I can shed some light on that. So um, there is funding available, but it, it's just part of the whole um, grant, part of the whole lot of money we've got set aside for this project. Um, so the any gravel we buy, have to buy, chips into, you know, money we can spend on the construction side. So we currently have uh, about, um, let's see, $8 million, uh, almost $9 million to spend on construction at this point. And so obviously that encompasses, you know, if it's third party contractors, it encompasses the hauling costs and encompasses purchasing gravel service materials. So, you know, every dollar that we spend is to purchase gravel service materials, a dollar we can't spend on construction. So just to give you, give everybody an, an idea of where we're at per the grant funding we had to start this project. Um, like I said, there's about $9 million left and that's going to go to, you know, all the things we have to do to build the roads. So what that's going to do, unfortunately is, is, you know, we're not going to be able to do all the roads on the list, but we've certainly got priority roads that we've already got construction drawings for that we'll get started on. And as, as we get moving, we'll just keep adding to the list and, and until we exhaust the resources essentially, but that can be part of the working session next week. Um, but the but the the short answer is yes, we have the funding. It's just part of the overall grant funding, um, and so it's going to, going to be just part of our costs to build these roads and do the stormwater controls. Yeah, I think motor fuels could do most of the dirt work, which would say be cost saving. Do you can you do that, Dave? Well, I know what the plan was is for us to build the project also. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then, yeah. and then we could use but some of our trucks to, to halt as right. well the gravel. Right. So we could save costs there. You know, I, I don't want us to spend all of our money on one or two roads. That's my point. You know, each district has its dire needs. So I think we need to plan that out too. So that's about it for me, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make sure that there was money available and that we can use our own resources. Okay, Mr. Gunn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Dillon, would you would you consider adding to your motion authorizing the Finance Committee to publish a request for proposals for construction services based on the recommendation of the project manager and the tribal departments um, for any piece of the construction that can't be handled internally so that we don't have to come back for another council meeting to get those RFPs published? Yeah, that'll be my motion. Steve, restate that in layman's terms, would you? I, yeah, I think your your original motion was to, to have the um, project manor, manager roads, motor fuels, and road maintenance and transportation bring a, a, uh, a plan back to the finance committee and I would a, add a to that detailed, detailed plan. You know, you, they've had over a couple of years now to get this plan done. So it should be about done, I think. That's right. And I think you do have engineer specifications now. But I would add to your motion and to authorize the finance committee to publish a request for proposals for construction services based on the recommendation of the project manager. That's my motion. That's the way I would have said it. And if I could, if I, if I may, Mr. Chair, this is Justin. If, right. if we're going to purchase gravel service material, do we also need to solicit an RFP for those? Or are we able to just source that and, and get that coming? You should get authority to, to RFP that also because it, because of the dollar value involved. So Mr. Dillon, if you would also authorize that. Again, adding to that motion I just made, what Mr. Gunn is saying again. It's encompassing quite a bit. But at least we can get something started and get it going, guys. God damn, we've been sitting around too long. 
<laughs> Can you repeat that motion? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, Secretary, call for the vote. Yes. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Vote. Jim Inks. Hermona Debray. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard. Austin Hawkins, Sr. Vote. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Don Roy Gosper? Yes. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. Garfield Little Dog? John Steele Sr.? Yes. Craig Dillon? Yes. Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion carried. Yes, go ahead, Councilman Dreamer. Oh, thank you, Chair. I just want to give a quick comment. I want to thank the roads for all the hard work you're doing. Keep it up and um, continue to work together to get this done this year. Thanks. Hoka. Councilman uh, Yellowboy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I promise to go through these real quick. Speed read. So... Ordinance of the Ogola Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogola Sioux Tribe amending the financial management manual adopted by ordinance number 09-13 as amended to add a process for payment tracking. Oh, excuse me, process for prepayment tracking. <laughs> Whereas the Ogola Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the United States Constitution, Article 6, and as a signatory of the, of the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851 and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868 and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Ogallis Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Ogallis Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Ogallis Sioux Tribe. And, and whereas... Tribal Council adopted the Financial Management Manual by Ordinance Number 09-13 on March 13, 2009, and amended it in Ordinance Number 12-05, 14-10, 14-15, and 17-27. And whereas several programs use prepayment vouchers, and it is critical to those prepayments pre that are properly tracked to ensure that they are used for the purpose for which prepayments are issued and the OST seeking repayment if they are not. And whereas the OST Finance Committee reviewed the financial management manual on March 28, 2024, and recommends in addition, what? That should uh, typo right there. Um, on the, one, two, three, four, fifth, whereas um, March 28, 2024, and recommends, not not recommends. In addition, an amendment to the financial management manual set forth herein. Now, therefore, be ordained that the Ogallis Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve and recommends the amends, amendments or ex recommendation and amends char chapter six by adding section six zero six dash or excuse me point six oh three and zero six point six oh four of the financial management manual of the Ogallis Sioux tribe to read in its entirety as follows. 
06.603, Procedures for Verification of Use of Vouchers for Prepayment. The program director or designee is responsible for ensuring that all vouchers issued for prepayment for services or goods are used and that the value of service, goods, materials, and equipment received is reconciled with the amount provided in the payment voucher. Each program shall develop additional internal program guidance necessary to comply with their individual grant requirements for verification. The program director or designee shall verify receipt of said service through statements showing date of delivery of service receipts or other documents sufficient to demonstrate the proper application of the prepayment voucher or verification of actual receipts of goods, materials, or equipment. To ensure that tribal funds are not being misused or lost, the program shall reconcile such prepayments periodically no less than quarterly to ensure that the service good material or equipment was received and that no overpayments were issued through a prepayment voucher. If necessary to ensure funds are spent in the required physical year, reconciliation should be made more frequently. 06.604 procedures for refund of payments. Upon determination of the services, goods, materials, or equipment were less than the value of the prepayment voucher, the program director or designee shall act immediately, take steps with the vendor to obtain return of funds. Upon receipt of funds that were overpaid, the program director will work with the appropriate OST account, accountant and compliance officer to ensure that the funds are properly credited. The program director in conjunction with the compliance officer and the comptroller will review the use of funds if the federal or other grant funds to determine the source of the funds to verify whether the funds may be properly returned to that department's budget or expended or whether the funds will need to be returned. If the federal or other grant funds are allowable for expenditure within the current physical year, the fund shall be credited back to the correct amount or excuse me, a correct account and the program budget shall be corrected to reflect such funds. If the federal or other grant funds are ineligible for reissue due to being returned outside of the eligibility physical year, eligible physical year, or otherwise disallowed, or excuse me, eligible financial year, or otherwise disallowed from future expenditure by grant requirements, the program director, accountant, and compliance officer will ensure that the funds are returned to the proper federal or other grantor agencies. The program director shall ensure that any required updates to program reporting include SF-425s or carryover reports are completed. And be it further ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve of the recommendation and amends chapter six by adding the addendum A to address specific requirements for refund traffic tra tracking for the LEAP as attached, and be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect immediately, immediately and shall supersede, repeal, replace all prior inconsistent laws of the Guala Sioux Tribe. Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Yellowboy, second by Councilwoman Tapio. Oh, you had a question? Go ahead, Councilwoman. Yeah, I, th I think just um, reading this and that last, therefore be it ordained, yeah. Chair, Finance. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it says tracking refund for LEAP. Is this pertaining to all the programs or just LEAP? LEAP. Yeah. So this amendment is just for them? Yes. Okay. Um, this is Georgette. Just to clarify, so the um, O. The 06, um, 603, and 604 apply to all programs um, to provide that they start tracking their prepayment vouchers. But LEAP has some really specific requirements on tracking. And so rather than apply those to all the programs, those specifics were put in the addendum. Okay. 
Okay, yes, we have a question again. Yeah, one more question. Um, on this ordinance, it does state that it just um, pertains to programs, but, you know, we have other uh, entities like that do follow the financial management. So does this just pertain to program, just programs? Or is, is it all tribal? Yeah. Uh huh. It's so, Georgette, are you listening to the conversation? Yes. Um. If you can add uh, Councilwoman Sears' recommendation, can you to, note your recommendation? No, my question was this the way I read it is it applies to programs, all pro tribal programs, but we have other entities like FAO, Property and Supply, everybody that orders um, material or whatever. Should, do they still follow that process? Because it just looks like programs do, according to this ordinance. So, um, you know, I'll defer to um, you all if you want to make it more expansive. I think the concern was just with Johanna to make sure that, you know, with the programs that we have to report on, that we're tracking all those funds, I can expand the language so that it includes you know, other entities that receive funds through the through the tribe. I mean, I mean the tracking, yeah, of the spending that they should all be held to the same process of following that process. So we don't, you know, exclude others use it and then making programs use it. You know, it should be across the board for all time. So if I if I strike out program and it just simply says the director or designee, um, do you feel like that's clear or would you like me to put um, tribal program director and all other, um, I can look at what their titles are, but. Well, it, no, we don't necessarily need titles, but I think everybody that, um, that purchases throughout the Ogallala Sioux tribal programs or and the, the entities, you know, like you have property and supply, you have um, FAO upstairs, you know, they all order supplies. So it's got to be something that covers everybody. Okay, I'll, I'll modify that language. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Um, Johanna. Thank you, um, Councilman Yellowboy. So, um, Georgette, so the reason why this we're doing this, um, Council, Councilwoman Sears, is our funding agency for LIAP required that we have this in our financial management manual, but it has to state LIAP. Um, so that's why I see programs, but I know me and Georgette have been going back and forth, but this has to get passed for LIAP. This is the internal policy so we can hold all the the vendors accountable and the repayment. So I just wanted to state that. So we well, just Well wanna... maybe maybe it's in the financial management. I don't know. But I'm just making that aware. So just leave the language as is just for LIAP only, right? Okay. All right, as is Georgette. Okay. All right. I misunderstood. I thought that we had we did want to have other programs track their vouchers as well if they got prepayment. So I I think at the next finance meeting we'll bring well, we have that working session Thursday. So we can bring that forward and then if we need to do it, that then we can make a motion then and bring it to the end of the month council meeting for so are programs. we going to um work on, have a working session on the financial management that's what we said on thursday okay i wasn't yep. there thursday so, so every yeah okay. we, on thursday we have um requests from uh council members to bring um other issues and i believe this one was on there too councilwoman halverson 
Can we have that working session out to the casino? Because it's stated for here, but this is too small of a place with as much people who are going to come. So the reason why we said here was because the records can be picked up here. Easier access for if we needed something. Okay, so um, Georgia, what I, um, what I recommend is like on the ordinance, that you presented to us is just add after prepayment tracking for Lee Hill. Yeah. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Jim Meeks. Yes. Hermona DeBray. Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Is this for LIHEAP or all programs? Josh, I just said that. Yes. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yeah. James Cross. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? David Puyer? Don Regalspare? Yes. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. Garfield Little Dog? Mm -hmm. Thank you. John Still Sr.? Yes. Craig Dillon? Eighteen yes, one not voting. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for the next uh, number six, um, I'm gonna turn it to the attorney, Attorney Gunn. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Fine. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, authorizing the Oglala Sioux Tribe Legal Department to file an amicus brief in the Oglala Sioux Nation Supreme Court to defend the jurisdiction of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court in the matter of Mazaska Oechaso OTP Financial Inc. versus Montelo, case number CIV 2022-0388. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution, Article 6, and as a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, September 17, 1851, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, April 29, 1868, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. Section 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the bother governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas the, the tribe has established a tribal judiciary consisting of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Inferior Court and the Oglala Sioux Nation Supreme Court, and together these courts provide for the maintenance of law and order and the administration of justice on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas the Supreme Court has affirmed the jurisdiction of Indian tribal courts over civil contract disputes that arise on Indian reservations between tribal members and non-members holding that such jurisdiction is essential to tribal self-government. 
since it allows reservation Indians to make their own laws and be ruled by them. Williams versus Lee, um, uh, 38 U.S. 217, 1959, Accord, Montana versus United States, 450 U.S. 544, 1981. And whereas in the matter of Mazaska Oichaso OTP Financial Inc. versus Montalo, case number CIV 2022-0388, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Inferior Court affirmed the jurisdiction of the tribal court over a contract dispute arising on the reservation um, strike the word between brought by a member of the Oglala Sioux tribe against Mazaska Oichaso OTP Financial Inc. And whereas that decision has been appealed and the appeal will soon be heard and, and decided by the Oglala Sioux Nation Supreme Court. And whereas on March 28, 2024, the Finance Committee of the Tribal Council voted to authorize the Oglala Sioux Tribe Legal Department to file an amicus brief in the Oglala Sioux Nation Supreme Court to defend the jurisdiction of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court in the matter of Mazaska Oichaso OTP Financial Inc. versus Montalo. And whereas the Tribal Council concurs with the motion of the Finance Committee and finds that the filing of an amicus brief in this matter is in the bench interest of the tribe and its members, now therefore be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby authorize the Oglala Sioux Tribe Legal Department to file an amicus brief in the Oglala Sioux Nation Supreme Court to defend the jurisdiction of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court in the matter of Mazaska Oichaso OTP Financial Inc. versus Montalo, case number CIV 2020 0388. Motion by Councilman Dale and second by Councilwoman Tapio. Question, go ahead, Councilwoman Halverson. Just a question or two. Um, does this like put us in section 19 if it's a current court case? Also, are we gonna start writing Aminkus briefs, Aminkus letters to every court case that we pertains to a tribal member? Um, I, Is this it, gonna open a precedent? This this is a, a matter of um, of public importance because it does address the jurisdiction of the tribe over civil actions on the reservation. So it is a unique case that the tribe has a unique interest in. I don't think it raises section 19 issues because you're not directing the court. You're not attempting to direct the court to take any particular action. You're simply expressing the position of the Oglala Sioux tribe in regard to a pending case. The court has its own job to do. So um, we're not really presented with anything, no, where the jurisdiction that this court case is over or anything like that. I know people want facts on everything else. So where's the other paperwork that we can look at for this? Where's the supporting documents? I can provide the a copy of the the tribal court's decision affirming its jurisdiction, um, and that's the decision that's on appeal. I can send that to the secretary yes, right it now. It should have been provided with these other documents as supporting statements, supporting documents. Councilman Jumpin Eagle. You know, I don't know if we want to see documents, court documents. That would be. Grounds for Section 19. All he's all we're allowing him to do is, um, you know, justify or, or or argue that you know that we have jurisdiction. He's not representing the Motlo. He all he's doing is stating the position. So I mean, I don't want to see no documents. I don't think none of us should actually see court case documents. Well, I would think they were public information if this, it was a court I settlement. Tell the chair floor, and this did come to committee and it passed. You know, we discussed this in committee last week. Kim, Steve, are you still there? Yes, I am.
Okay. Well, sec uh, secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. No. Jim Meeks? Yes. Ramona DeBray? I'm not voting. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr.? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr.? Oh. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr.? Yes. James Cross? No. Anna Halverson? No. Ella Giancarlo? Hello, John. Yeah. George Dreamer Jr. Robin Tapio. Oh, thank you. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. David Puyer. Yes. Don Rigolspear. Jackie Sears. Not voting. Garfield Little Dog? Yeah. John Still Sr.? Yes. Craig Dillon? Yes. Eleven yes, three no, five not voting. Motion carried. Still have five items left. Yes, we still have some two thirds items. Go ahead. Um, Resolution of the Gallows Sioux Tribal Council of the Gallows Sioux Tribe rescinding resolution number 23-197 that assigned the Gallows Sioux Tribe Veteran Shelter to the Gallows Lakota Housing Authority and transfers and reassigns the Veteran Shelter to the Gallows Sioux Tribe for ownership, operations, and management. Whereas the Gallows Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article Six and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of the 1851 1.749 and the Treaty of Fort Laramie 18, of 1868 15.635 and continues the nation to nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Oglalsu tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 25 USC Section 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws. And on Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gallows Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Gallows Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas the Gallows Sioux Tribe Health and Human Services Committee has determined that it is in the best interest of the tribe's military veterans to have the tribe reassume ownership and management of the Gallows Sioux Tribe Veterans Shelter. And whereas on October 4, 2023, the OST Tribal Council adopted resolution number 23-197, assigning and transferring the tribe's veteran shelter to the Gallows Lakota Housing Authority with a leasehold interest. And whereas prior to the adoption of the resolution number 23-197, the Gallows Tribe operated the Gallows Tribe Veteran Shelter, which is reasonably believed to be located at 1 Veterans Drive, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, 57770 in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, as a tribal program. And whereas the Gallows Tribe Veteran Shelter is an important tribal program as it provides long-term housing and a variety of services, including financial literacy classes, home ownership classes, assistance in finding employment and connection to support services, to homeless veterans on our Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in a 13-bed facility. And whereas the Gallows Tribe honors its veterans and strongly believes that our veteran brothers and sisters deserve comfortable shelter and our utmost support. And whereas the Gallows Tribe's Health and Human Services Committee has considered this matter and desires to keep the Gallows Tribe Veterans Shelter open, maintained and operational and has decided that the best path to achieve this objective is to resume the responsibility of carrying out the program's mission, interests, and obligations. And whereas the Tribal Council of Gloucester Tribe agrees with the Health and Human Services Committee, 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gloucester Tribal Council does hereby rescind resolution number 23-197 in its entirety, and be it further resolved that the Gloucester Tribal Council transfers and assigns to the Ogalsu Tribe all rights and interests in and to the Ogalsu Tribe veteran shelter of whatever kind or nature, including the building and other assets associated with the Ogalsu Tribe veteran shelter, including obligations, duties, and commitments related to the Ogalsu Tribe veteran shelter and its operation of whatever kind or nature and fully assumes the operation and the management of the Ogalsu Tribe veteran shelter. And be it further resolved that the that nothing in this resolution shall be construed to be an express or implied waiver of sovereign immunity enjoyed by Gallagher Tribe and Gallagher Lakota Housing Authority, and be it further resolved that the transfer and assignment of the rights and responsibilities under this resolution shall become effective on the date of adoption, and be it further resolved that the tribal president or in his absence, tribal vice president shall be authorized to sign any, doc any documents to effectuate this action. Motion to approve. Hey, we got a question. Thank you, Chair. You know, um, I don't know if there needs to be language in here, but um, we forgot a person whenever we did, took this action before, and that was Billy Lesser, one of the employees who, um, you know, was kind of left out there not knowing where she was, what she was supposed to do, all of that. So should, should, that, should there be something in here to mention the, their employee that they have? I mean, she did follow it out to housing. You, you, you guys all know she came back to committee because she had questions and didn't know where she was. You know, her pay, her pay periods are, are her, were all messed up. Everything, you know, there was a lot of chaos there at that time. So, um, I don't, I don't know if there needs to be something in there to say, huh? But shouldn't it say in here that, well, I'm not specifically stating her, I guess, but the employee, because that employee went out there. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Councilman Yellowwing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree with my colleague over here because uh, last Thursday you guys had me go help um, the employee try to secure her last paycheck um, from housing. And um, <clears throat> so I think something needs to be um, clarified how we're going to, because I know last time when we read this, there was no clarification. Right. She just was told it went to housing and then put her in a place where she was bouncing back and forth between chief of staff and the treasurer and dean and then out to housing. So I, I, I think, and I know we, we're not supposed to deal with personnel issues, but I think for clarification on this one, we need to clarify that for her so we're not pushing her in this direction and in that direction trying to get a resolution, so. Yeah, I was just uh, told that she was rift. So, yeah. She gets the first option. So, I I don't think that's going to be a problem. It's already in the policy. <laughs> Councilwoman Sears. I think the chief of staff did say that 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 process will be followed, so she's aware of it. Okay. All right. Who second the the vote there? Okay, Councilman Young. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Vote. Jim Meeks? Yes. Ramona DeBray? Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Yes. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr.? Yes. 
James Cross, Anna Halverson, yes, Ella John Carlo, yes, George Dreamer Jr., yes, Robin Tapio, yes, Tyler Lunderman, David Puyer, yes. Don Ray Goldspear, Jackie Sears, uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog, yes. John Still Sr., yes, Craig Dillon, yes. Seventeen yes, two not voting. Motion carried. Thank you, Val. Can you read the next one? Resolution of the Gloucester Tribal Council of the Gloucester Tribe authorizing the change order dated April 1st, 2024 and amending Article 7.2 of the GBK Joint Venture Contract for the construction of the Gloucester Tribe Child Care and Development STEAM Center Project. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe is a sovereign <clears throat> tribal nation that has entered into treaties as a supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article 6 and its signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, September 17, 1851, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, April 29, 1868, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Oglossu tribe organized under sex, Section 16 of the Indian Re Reorganization Act of 1934-25 USC, subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglossu Tribal Council is the governing body of the, the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1... W, empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, and adopt laws governing the, the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglalasu tribe and its membership. Whereas the OST Child Care Development Program OST Child Care is a tribal program providing child care services to the tribal membership of the Oglawasu Tribe. And whereas the Oglawasu Tribe Child Care and Development Program is in need, in need of adequate facilities to carry out its purpose of providing services for children and families of the, Oglaw of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas the, OS <clears throat> the OST Child Care Development Program has been operating from the airport building, which is inadequate and space in space and working and in working environment. And whereas a new office and steam center will provide a healthier environment and increase space to administer the program to best provide services to the childcare, to the children and families. And whereas the OST childcare, <coughs> childcare and development program has received funding for construction of a building consisting of an office and steam center. And whereas the COVID 19 pandemic has caused an increase in the cost of the building supplies as well as need to increase square footage to allow for social distancing requirements. And whereas the construction funding received for the building of the child care building has been increased to allow for the increased cost in the space and materials and consists, consists of discretionary funding from the Office of Child Care of the Administration for Ch Children and Families and is an allowable cost. And as and whereas the GBK joint venture contract agreement needs to be amended to reflect the increased amount as stated in the proposed change order dated April 1st, 2024. And whereas the OST Child Care has an existing contract with GBK joint venture for the OST Child Care STEAM Center construction project and has requested approval of a change order for an 
increase in construction costs in the amount of $13,204,905 for a total contract amount of $13,728,905. And whereas OST, OST procurement manual cites that any changes under any changes or change orders must obtain the approval of the Ogallosu Tribal Council. And whereas the OST Health and Human Services Committee has reviewed the request by the OST Child Care Director and recommends Tribal Council approval for the GBK Joint Venture Change Order dated April 1st, 2024 and amending Article 7.2 of the contract. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Tribal Council does hereby authorize the change order dated April 1st, 2024, and amending Article 7.2 of the GBK Joint Venture Contract for the construction of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Child Care and Development Steam Center Project in the amount of $13,204,905 as attached and incorporated herein by reference. And be it further resolved that the Tribal President are in his absence, the Tribal Vice President is authorized to sign any documents to execute this change order certification. Go ahead, Councilman Dillon. How much is that? How much is the change order? How much? Well, the change order itself. Oh, oh, So previously, <clears throat> excuse me, the last administration had done a change order to $7 million. And then from there to where we are now is another $6.3 million. Wow. I got more questions. No. How far construction is this? How far is it? Um, right up until where they start digging dirt. They're ready to go. They're ready to mobilize but they need this signed and then a notice to proceed from myself that says, okay, we got all the approvals, come in. So they were actually slated to move this week, but because of the processes that we have to go through to get to this point, um, it may be another two weeks out. I've never heard of a change order that much. You know what I mean? I've heard of, you know, five, 6,000, 7,000 7, for a change order. But never this amount. And yeah. It's kind of shocking. It is. Because and, and usually they send them back out for bid, don't they? I mean, they would. The However, in, in this case, in our in the contract, if we were to do that, two things could happen. First, uh, we'd have to pay 10% of the contract to, to the um, GBK. Second of all, that may not be covered by our funding agency, so that would have to come out of tribal funds as opposed to federal. So... Um, those two things can happen. Who signed that without reading it? Um, the Kevin Killer was the tribal chair that signed it at the time. First, the first time we brought it, uh, Julian Bear Runner was the tribal president. Then when the change order happened, Kevin Killer was the tribal chair at that time. Wow. Yeah, it's been it's been ongoing since 2019. We got the initial 3.2 million dollars in 2019. And so we did the pre-planning, and in the pre-planning, we found that it wasn't enough. It wasn't going to be enough space for infants, toddlers, after-school programs, and our office building space to move into. So it increased up to 27,000 square feet, and now it's just cost through COVID have gone up on steel, on wood, and labor. And so the price, we just kept chasing this price, and finally we have a set price because the bids all went out on the subs, came back, and this is where they've come back at. And this has been going on for three administrations now? This is the third, yes. And we're this close, and, and, we're like and, and ready has, to has dig. Has there been any, anything done? Any shovels turned over or nothing? Has, has it even been marked off? Yes, it's all marked off. It's been surveyed. Um, the, we're, all we're waiting for is once this goes through, they mobilize, they bring in all of the equipment and scoop up dirt. That was supposed to be done this week, but because of the process, it's putting it back again. But we're, we're that close. And this is um, project one of three. 
So I want to try to get this one through so I can start project two and project three this year. I think you're going to need uh, someone to look over those contracts from now on that knows construction because I never heard of, you know, you having to pay because you cancel a contract. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's written in here. I, I have the contract here. Who drafted it's that? Um, Rayanne Reddell. Woo. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty standard language at the time. Councilwoman Halverson. I'll just do a motion to approve. Thank you. Okay, got a motion approved by Councilwoman Howard. We got a question, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I asked uh, Pigeon out in the hallway if she has the owner's rep. So I, I do believe that what Craig is saying is valid. I mean, we do have Mr. Shanger who's looking over this stuff, but I mean, that's quite a drastic amount for a change order. And there have been amounts just, like thrown, I'm sorry. I just don't set well with me. You know, we, we're to look out for the betterment of our programs and the betterment of, of services provided and, and just my opinion. I, I understand that and if I could respond, um, there have been numbers in between the seven million and where we are now, because it went from seven to eight to 10 to 11 and then now the final one is 13, but it's just, like I said, we just, by the time we would get through the process and get the money, get get the funding covered, the amount would go up again. And so we'd chase that amount, we'd get that amount, and then they'd come back and say, well, materials cost more, so we'd chase that amount again. And we're finally at the point, we're just literally ready to scoop up the earth and get this going. Councilman Little Dog. Well, you gotta remember, you know, we didn't bring on the owner's rep until the tail end of this. And the moment we brought on Mr. Shingra's uh, owner's rep, that amount was already up there. And so he himself, cause I had a discussion with him, he himself didn't, he was kind of shocked by, you know, the increase, but he said after he reviewed everything and, and, and how, you know, according to square footage and the cost of uh, materials and everything, he said that was probably, you know, the amount. And so what they did was, he, he told me was that they waited for the bids to go out to see what the actual price would probably be. And that's the figure you came up with, correct? Correct. It's actually even close to the con construction projects that are going now at Lakota Tech, because I called them too to do a comparison and see what if we were getting um, inflated on our price, but theirs came in like within a dollar difference per square foot. So, so we didn't we didn't have a, a owner's rep until the very tail end of this whole situation, which mm -hmm. I mean, we should have did from the get go. Yeah, lesson learned, definitely. Yep. Inflation. Go ahead, Councilwoman Alverson. You know, we're kind of having the same situation with the multi-purpose buildings. Um, we could have had a um, twice as big of a multi-purpose building if we had ordered the materials when it was approved. And now we're just looking at a 11,000 square building instead of a 28,000 square building. So they've been, re the cost of materials since COVID has drastically gone up on all this material. And so it just um, it just makes sense that the price had to go up to get to the space to meet your needs for the childcare. And you know, I'm really looking forward to that building for the childcare program because you guys definitely deserve it for the kids and for your program with all the hard work that you guys do. Here. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we have a second by Councilman Dreamer. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Senior. Jim Meeks. Yes. Hermona Debray. Yes. Ryan Jumpenigle, Senior. Yes. Austin Watkins, Senior. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. 
George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Abstain. Tyler Lunderman. David Puyer. Don Ray Goldspare. Jackie Sears. Oha. Garfield Little Dog. John Still Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. No. No. Thirteen, yes, one no, one abstain, four not voting, motion carried. Congratulations. Yes, go ahead, Councilman. Okay, resolution of Regalasu Tribal Council of Regalasu Tribe approving the contract between the Regalasu oh, Tribe, West Department of Public Safety, and Lalantos LLC with a limited waiver of sovereign immunity only for specific performance of the contract. <clears throat> Whereas the Regalasu Tribe is a sovereign nation that has entered into treaties that is the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution, Article 6, and is a signatory to the Treaty of Port Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749 and the Treaty of Port Laramie of 1868-15 Stat 635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Gloucester Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C., subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gloucester Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Glossu tribe and its membership. And whereas tribal nations across the United States have an unacceptable rate of missing and murder in indigenous persons and have limited resources to address this public safety issue. And whereas the Oglossu Tribe Department of Public Safety desires to enter in, into an independent contract with Lelantos LLC, a company with experience in special operations forces and the intelligence community that has partners with TransUnion LLC to gather and research data and provide data analytics in Oglossu Tribal membership, a member of missing and murdered cases. And whereas the contract requires a limited waiver of sovereign immunity to enforce contract performance, and whereas data research and analytics is another resource tool that the Department of Public Safety can use to help investigate missing and murdered tribal members. And whereas the OST Law and Order Committee has reviewed the proposed contract and resolution and recommend that the Tribal Council approves the contract and resolution to assist OST law enforcement with the investigation of our missing and murdered persons. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglossu Tribal Council does hereby approve the contract between the Oglossu Tribe, OST Department of Public Safety, and Lelantos LLC as attached and incorporated <coughs> by reference herein. With a limited waiver of sovereign immunity in tribal court only for specific performance of the contract. And be it further resolved, the tribal president, or in his absence, the tribal vice president, is authorized to execute any documents to execute the contract. Motion. A motion by Councilman Yellowboy, second by Councilwoman Tapio. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, uh, Sr. <clears throat> Jim Meeks? Yes. Her Hermona Debray? Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Oh. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross? Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. Ella John Carlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? David Puyer? Don Ray Goldspare? Jackie Sears? Oh, huh. Garfield Little Dog? Mm -hmm. John Still Sr.? Yes. Craig Dillon?
14 yes, 5 not. Voting motion carried. Thank you, Chair. Um, motion. Second. Okay. okay, wait, we got a couple questions here. Go ahead, Councilman uh, Jumping Eagle, then Councilman Yellowboy. No, Chair, there was a, when we was having lunch, you know, we, we, we needed to take one more action, and that was to uh, a motion that, um, from the Glossu tribe that the tribal relations department up in Pier, the representative that he does not speak on behalf of the Glossu tribe. That's my motion. Yes, thank you. I was just about to mention that. Go ahead, uh, Councilman Yellowboy. Um, I was going to mention that, but also I need to yield the floor. So if you want to run this one, and then I'll yield it. To okay, so just so you know, the uh, Cheyenne River um, banned Christy Nome from their reservation uh, today. So that's, 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 that's good news that uh, they're joining the Oglala. So it's good on that. Hopefully they'll, they'll join us in following a uh, lawsuit. Um, so we're trying to work on that uh, just to let you know. And, and I'm glad that, yeah, we do need to address Mr. Flute and, um, because he just doesn't represent the Great Plains in the way that he should. Um, you wanted to give the floor to someone? Uh, um, after oh, the motion. oh, I'm sorry. Let's run that motion. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks? Yes. Hermona Debray? Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr.? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr.? Oh. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr.? Yes. Yeah. James Cross? Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. Ella John Carlo? Yes. George Jima, Jr.? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? David Puyer, Donnery Gospear, Jackie Sears, uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog, yeah. John Still Sr., yeah. Craig Dillon, seventeen yes. Seventeen yes, two not voting. Motion carried. Go ahead, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Chair, and I hope Mr. Flute's listening. I want to yield the floor to uh, Ms. Bicro. Thank okay. you. Um, Pigeon Bicro, Director of the Child Care Development Program, I was just recently on. One thing I forgot to ask for is approval for a payment in the amount of $112,381. You do have that in your packet, and if you look on the the front is the request then the back is the breakdown of all the costs associated with the project and the work that they've done this um quarter that we haven't paid for is that hundred and twelve thousand three hundred and eighty one being over seventy five thousand dollars i need council approval to pay that second so we have a motion by councilman little dog second by councilwoman helverson Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. <coughs> Jim Meeks? Yes. Hermona Debray? Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr.? Yes. James Cross? Anna Halverson? Yes. Ella John Carlo? Yes. George Jimmer, Jr.? Yes. Robin Tapio? Abstain. Tyler Lunderman? Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Don Rigo Spare? Jackie Sears, uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog, yep. John Steele Sr., yes. Craig Dillon,
15 yes, one abstain, three not voting, motion carried. Who made that motion? Okay. Motion to adjourn by Councilwoman Carlo, second by Councilman Yellowboy. Okay, so motion to. No. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Jim Meeks. Hermona Debray. Yes. Ryan Jumpinigo, Sr. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. John Ray Gospair. Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Garfield Little Dog. John Still Sr. Craig Dillon. One, two, three. Fifteen yes, four not voting. Motion carried. We adjourned at three forty six seven or seven.